Welcome back everybody to another pomade review and today we're going to be taking a look at one of the oldest if not the oldest surviving hair preparations out in the market today and the pomade I'll be talking about today is Morgan's Pomade which has been around since 1873 and it's from England. Now I know compared to a lot of the stuff you see nowadays this isn't really that special but for its time it was an absolute game changer and I see why it still survives to this very day. But let's skip over the minor details and save that for later after we do the styling and um, I'll get straight to the point and skip the chit chat. So it comes in a yellow box with a logo here and the little slogan, darkens gray hair. You'd find the ingredients list on the other side and over here you'd find a portrait of Robert Martin. He's the guy who founded the mortgage pomade company as well as a short company history overview. And you'd find a logo again with a different slogan. Now if you open the box up, you'd find a very um, old school looking glass jar, which personally find to be really cool. This is the 100 gram version, by the way. You can opt for either 100 grams, which is 3.5 ounces, or seven ounces, which is 200 grams. But obviously I picked 3.5 ounces because I don't really see the need of having an extra big jar. This is not something I'd use every day and just pretty much for my collection and something to add to my list of reviews. And uh, anyway, most of my pomades are about at least three ounces. So I don't see the need to get an extra big jar. This is, by the way, um, a hair darkening pomade, and it's not every day when you actually find a product that not only serves as something to style your hair and dress it, but also is a great hair solution. And even nowadays, I don't think there are a lot of hair styling products for men that actually darkens um, your hair and restore it to its natural color at the same time. Also in the box, you find an instructional piece of paper in different languages that says, um, directs you on how to use it, which is pretty obvious, brush and comb your hair, blah, blah, blah. But on the last sentence, it says to, um, once the ideal shade is reached, reduce applications to two or three times a week to maintain the color. That's for those for using this pomade to darken gray hair. Obviously, because I don't have gray hair, nor do I have a gray problem, and I have very dark hair, this is not something for me to talk about. But the pomade itself um, is actually um, pretty unique in its own right in some ways. And... It comes in a brown glass jar and a gray screw top lid. Opening the lid up, you'd see a very um, greasy looking pomade that's white and somewhat of a very pale yellow color, but mostly served like a white grease. The scent on it, I really can't put my finger into it, but I find it very soothing. It's a little like lemongrass, but it's mostly like a herbal, kind of like a medicinal kind of scent. But if you walk into like this aromatherapy candle kind of shop, it smells a little like that, but just less sweet. But it's very like a herbal scent, which I personally find to be very soothing. And now because this is an oil-based pomade, just, you know, my channel's mainly like full of oil-based pomades. We're going to be rolling with slightly damp hair today as usual. And now that our hair is damp, it's time to apply the pomade. And because this is a greasy pomade, scooping it out you'd expect to be really, really simple, really uh, easy as well. It just scoops out like nothing. It feels pretty much like melted butter. And on your hands, this stuff is just super easy to break down. It breaks out like nothing as well because it's just literally straight up very, very oily, super greasy. So. Um, applying it to your hair, it goes in like nothing as well. I normally use at least two scoops of the stuff. They're only like two and a half scoops. I'll apply another scoop for the side and back. And it just feels really oily. It doesn't actually feel sticky, but it's very oily for the most part on your hands. And if you apply it and combing it up, it also feel um, Pretty much like nothing as well, and there's no, obviously no tugging because this is just something that's pretty light. There's barely any resistance to it, so combing is really no hassle at all. And, you know, it just slicks pretty nicely. I, obviously, this doesn't have any hole that you wouldn't expect it to. I mean, it doesn't have any hole. It has, like, very, very minor, minor hold, but it's just... um one of the lightest stuff you would find out in the market today. But, you know, 
For some of you who have been watching my channel for quite a while, you know that I'm the kind of guy who doesn't need much hold because I have like relatively fine hair, but I'm the kind that needs a lot of slickness. And this product, it doesn't have the perfect slickness, but it has enough, like really, like I wouldn't say really, but just pretty good slickness to actually keep your hair um, in place all day. This is the kind of product that does not rely on hold for uh, keeping your hair in place, but it relies on the slickness of the stuff because it's just like almost straight up oil. It's very easy to apply and use and comb and style. It's very, um, you get very quick styling with this. Um, it, the oiliness allows it to be pretty slick. So its properties for holding your hair up relies on the slickness and not the hold. But despite being so light, my hair is in place for the most part like throughout the whole day. There's obviously going to be some movement and you need to recomb throughout the day because it's pretty light, but the slickness on it just allows it to be like really neat all day and you can see that that's like a nice natural shape out of it. And the shine on it, let's talk about the shine. Because it's something so oily, I would expect it to be very, very wet looking, kind of like along the lines of Royal Crown hair dressing and Brill Cream. But surprisingly, this um, is the shine on it's very well controlled. It's pretty moderate. It's sort of like a between a medium and high shine, but it's, it's relatively, um, it's pretty glossy, but I wouldn't say that it's super wet looking. And this is actually pretty impressive because for something so old, you would um, expect it to look very wet and straight up oily, but it has a little bit of a glassy shine, kind of like, you know, your hair has a layer of glass to it. It's like a very nice, um, healthy shine. It has a bit of a wet look to it, but throughout the day, um, the shine remains very consistent. There is no dulling, and the shine would appear to be exactly the same as what you first put in your hair. And also, the scent is very light, so once you put it in your hair, you can't really smell it anymore. You still um, kind of smell it on your hands, but if you wash it off, obviously, the, the scent is gone. Drop the can onto the sink, the cap onto the sink. Anyway, this is some really, really quick styling and I can get a very um, low profile side part to this. And this is obviously only good for your more conservative hairstyles like slick bags if you have them. Um, that hair type suits for you, but obviously I can't do slick bags given like my um, particular hair type, my cowlick. So a really low um, contour side part would be perfect with this product right here. Pomping would probably be almost impossible, especially if you have very thick hair, but if you have fine hair, and you know, a decent length for it, you can probably try, but it would end up just turning into crap for the rest of the day very clearly. So this kind of product, even with like a low profile hairstyle, you need to recomb throughout the day. And this is how the product looks my hair under this lighting. And now I'll show how the shine looks under much better lighting through my desk lamp. Under better lighting conditions, this is how Morgan's pomade looks in my hair. And you can see the nice high gloss right there. And my hair came out looking very neat with it. Well, there's not really much to say about this pomade because it's literally just like very greasy. It's kind of like using an almost solid oil, like a bit like melted butter, but it's basically like a grease that kind of darkens the hair, but I'm not the kind of guy to actually talk about how it improves graying over time because I have dark hair. And speaking of dark hair, even using this pomade could actually enhance the darkness in my hair. So that's an extra cool factor. I find that the um, relatively high, healthy shine, it gives really goes hand in hand to um, the darkening effects that it provides my hair. And I just really like the way it makes uh, my hair look in terms of shade. And even like styling with it provides a relatively um, natural looking shape that can look really like dapper and neat. And you know, these kind of products go really well with the military brush as well. If you want the um, extra slick look to it, it can give a very tight look to your sides and I enjoy this a lot. Anyway, um, this product has been around since 1873, which is amazing when you think about it because during that time, you, has, you still have some pomades which relied on using animal fats like lard and even bear's grease. We know that petroleum has been used in making pomades since at least as early as the 1870s because Morgan's pomade features petro petroleum jelly in its ingredients. In fact, its first ingredient is it's actually really based on mineral oil, which is kind of like liquid petroleum, but its basic ingredients are mineral oil and petroleum when a lot of the um, pomades during that time consisted of lard or animal fat. And also it's an extra, extra plus given that 
It also darkens your hair and restores it to its natural color if you're experiencing graying problems, which is why I guess it became very um, viral during that time. It became like widespread around the world pretty quickly. And word has gotten from ocean to ocean, from continent to continent about Morgan's pomade. And so it became distributed worldwide and made its name. So that's pretty much why it, it was very popular. It still survives till today, I think. Honestly, I don't really know whether the formula has changed at all, but I think it's actually very likely. But clearly, um, it's very unlikely that anybody who's lived through the 1870s is alive today to tell us whether it the formula has changed or not. Because, you know, it's, it's very unlikely. So anyway, um, I think it's actually um, pretty likely that it changes formula because, you know, the washability on this, I forgot to mention its washability, it actually comes out really easily. And I imagine that it would come out not as easy as it did back um, in the 19th century. I mean, it took me two washes to get this out of my hair completely. And even with one wash, it leaves behind um, a very clean buildup that feels somewhat still greasy, but for the most part, um, it's pretty clean, which is, again, very impressive for an old, an older product. With this product, obviously being a lighter and greasier one, you're not going to experience so much of an increase in hold throughout the days to follow because it's a very light product, so it builds up really lightly and there's not really much hold added to it, but you're going to experience more control, a little more control as you style throughout the next days, which is always nice to have a little more control in your styling. Then the greasiness factor of this pomade, if you have it um, in your hair after you style it, you wouldn't really feel much greasiness in your hair, but if you rub your hands through your hair, there, there would definitely be somewhat of an oily um, deposit, like an oily film on to your hands. And also this pomade contains some strange ingredients to it. You can argue that the um, ingredients present in it are basically for the um, graying properties. I mean, the properties that kind of eliminates graying, but you would also find a couple of alcohols in there. So I think that maybe probably um, assists in the washout of the pomade. But surprisingly, this, this pomade actually washes out easier than I expected. And also what I found really interesting is that I don't think the um, patching has really changed much over the years. I mean, obviously, I don't know how it was packaged in the 19th century because then again, we wouldn't have anybody alive right now to tell us how it was for sure. But I saw some ads of Morgan's pomade from circa the 1940s and 50s, and the jars look exactly the same as how it is nowadays. Obviously, with some minor changes, such as the um, text especially, there wasn't the uh, since 1873 sign here or the original. There wasn't the um, the sentences right here. And obviously, there's some like modern additions to it, such as the longevity of the product, which says that It'll, it has a shelf life of 12 months. And the slogan changed as well. Like the one you'd see in the size of here. Right now it says darkens gray hair and keeps the um, hair looking healthy and well-groomed. While the slogan, if you can look closely in the ads, they're completely different. But final verdict on Morgan's Pomade. If you want a great topper, you know, something to add over a stronger holding pomade, then Morgan's pomade would be like really nice for that because it enhances the um, natural darkness of your hair if you do have dark hair. And it gives like a really nice shine to it as well. And the scent, you might love it, you might hate it, but I personally do like it. It has a great scent, great shine. It's, it makes them um, a great topper for um, something so light and greasy. It does have a pretty good performance of keeping your hair in place all day. And this is pretty much all I have to say about the pomade. If you like this video, please um, leave a comment in the comment section below. Give a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon to never miss a single upload of mine, and I'll see you in my next video. Stay greasy, everybody.